You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, hello, and how are you? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warp Podcast. I am your host, Rick. My co-host is with us today. He's got a lot to say. Ryan, Big Show, Pulley. And What's I know happening? I know what he's chomping at the bit to get to, but I'm purposely going to wait for that. <laughs> how was your weekend, man? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's Can't nice. complain. Can't complain. Yeah, everything was good for me up until um, uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, 24 second mark last night. <laughs> uh, we'll discuss. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely we'll discuss. discuss. We'll discuss. Um, I, I will tell you this. I am not officially upgraded to um, season over status, and I'll tell you why. We we still got We still got some life. Um, albeit it's going to be a uh, shorter life expectancy, but we still got some, but let's, let's start off with Hollywood, man. Um, <sighs> they're constantly pushing the agenda, bro. I, I've heard for a couple weeks that, uh, they are going to do another Scooby-Doo reboot, uh, remake or kind of animated thing. Movie. Yeah. It, it's, it's a, uh movie but it's a cartoon it's a feature length cartoon gotcha but uh the producers and the director have been on record and said that they are officially bringing velma out out of what the closet she is she was in there see that's the same thing i mean we all grew up knowing bert and ernie were gay we knew that shaggy was a stoner and Scooby was a stone, but we never said it. We didn't push it out in anybody's face. Hold up, Bart and Ernie were gay. You didn't know that? <laughs> they actually came out a year or two ago. <laughs> Stop it! They were not gay when you, we were kids. You did not know that? <laughs> they were not gay when we were kids. They well, were they, gay they, in a year ago. They are. They are gay now. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord! But yeah, I mean. These are just unwritten things. You know, it is what it is. But now they've got to push the agenda. Let's fly our flag out in the open. Let everybody know it. The bottom line is we don't care. I mean. There are people that do care. You and I don't care. But it's a cartoon, bro. No, I get it. But there are people that do care. That now you're actually going to tell me that people care who the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are banging. I'm sure they do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. And you know, full disclosure, I don't care if you're gay or not, or what flag you fly. That that doesn't concern me. I mean, even if I don't feel that it's right, that doesn't affect my status with you. What you do is what you do. What I do is what I do. At the end of the day, we we still people. I just don't like it to be pushed out there. Hey, we got to do this and we got to be strong about it. No, you don't. You can keep it subtle. You don't have to broadcast to the world. What does it matter? You know? But that's just yeah. me, like you said. That agenda is being pushed all over the place. I mean... Did you see uh, Kyler Murray's outfit going into the stadium? That big bright green thing. Yeah, the the you know the uh, old Hillary Clinton suit, the zoot suit best pants that he was wearing. Yeah, that, yeah, um, it's, it's all. <clears throat> this one I'm gonna say about Kyler Murray. If you look at Kyler Murray from certain angles, he looks like a 12 year old Anthony Anderson. He does. He does. But 
all the agendas are being pushed. And yeah, I'm with you. I'm just tired of I'm I'm tired of seeing it. Oh, and by the way, Madonna has come out as gay. She's always been gay, or at least bisexual. Again, we might have known. Trisexual it out there. She try anything once, <laughs> twice if she likes it. Uh yeah, we already knew that about her. <laughs> oh my. Hell, um, just watch any of her videos from the 80s. You can tell she what she was into. Man. Yeah, you, like you said, try anything. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about an unsolved mystery that uh, I had uh, ran up on. This airline, and this was back in 2014, so I'm a little late to the party on this. Uh, the Malaysia Airlines <laughs> Flight 370. Uh, it was a passenger aircraft that went missing back in 2014. And um, I guess it said that uh, on March 8th, uh, while flying from, I'm going to say, if I pronounce this right, Kuala Lumpur International Airport to its planned destination, which would have been uh, the Beijing Capital Airport, the crew registered... Uh, a last communication with air traffic control about 38 minutes after takeoff when the when they were over the South China Sea. And then the they lost contact with them. The aircraft uh, it disappeared from the radar screens. Um, and it, I guess it was deviating westward from its original flight path and uh, crossed the Malay Peninsula. Then it left uh, radar range 200 nautical miles northwest of Penang Island. Now, all 20, 227 passengers and 12 crew members were presumed dead, but no one has found the plane or the wreckage. So, I'm just going to give my quick thought on it because, you know, I don't know much about search and rescue but i'm assuming it anytime you're flying over waters that's where you ended up yeah i remember that whole thing when it happened and they they just completely disappeared i'm curious if maybe it blew up or something you think well to not even find any body parts or any wreckage, uh, clothing, anything to wash up somewhere. And that's the thing. If it Especially blew up, there would still be some. Years. There would still be something, something that was there. Well, you would I think. Mean, I mean, depending on how deep, you know, we're part of the ocean. I mean, we know the ocean is super deep in areas, places. Yeah. I mean, there's parts of the ocean we've never even discovered yet, um, but. I mean, it really depends exactly where it was at. I know when I flew to Hawaii, it was a trip because, you know, for about four and a half hours, you're yeah. you're just above water. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Hawaii is halfway to Japan, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say there was any military involvement, but you're flying over uh, China waters. Anything could happen. True, but commercial, I mean, we fly commercially over, I mean, I don't think there's any restricted airspace, unless they were flying too low. If they're flying too low, though, there's obviously some mechanical issue, but they were abducted by aliens. They're going to come back in five years like nothing ever happened. What are you talking yep. about? We just took off. Actually, that, that one, there's a TV show like that. Hey, that's where that's why I said, yeah, that. that's them. That's actually the crew. <laughs> it's kind of like the Blair Witch Project. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> Let's make a movie for five dollars and uh, make millions off of it. You lucky bastards, right? All right. Um, before I cut off of that, uh, no disrespect to any of the um family members or friends uh, of the people that were on that flight. I just I just find it highly irregular that we didn't find something. Uh, and I'm just wondering how inept were 
the people that were handling search and rescue, were they looking in the right spot for one thing? Um, Cause once they go out of radar, you don't know when they begin to go down. This is true. That That's true. There's, there's many thousands of square nautical miles that they would have to search. I'm just thinking one of these days on deadliest catch, I'm going to watch them pull up those uh, crates with the, uh, uh, Alaskan king crab or whatever's in there, right? And they're gonna be like, "Hey, that's a airplane wing, right?" <laughs> and they'll make the discovery that way. Although I don't think they <laughs> they they fish for king crabs there near China. I could be wrong. Uh, that, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, that, Whalers, that would be maybe. a violation. That would be a violation. Whalers, maybe, possibly so. Yeah. All right. Um. So check it out, bro. I'm going to go ahead and talk about that thing that I really don't want to talk about <clears throat> because I see the gleam in your eye. I know There's you want to no out there. There is no gleam in my eye, brother. I am not here to pile on because I'm going to let you go ahead, but I'm not, there is no, I'm, well, I'm not I, going I'm, I'm just going to say this. It hurts, but it doesn't hurt as bad as I thought it would. And here's why. And, and by the way, people, we we are talking football real quick. The Chiefs and the Raiders had their annual let's get it on part one uh, yesterday. And part of me's happy it wasn't a blowout. Because if we lose 44 to 13, we've got some problems. We lose 30 to 29. There are some things that I know we can fix. And there were lots of things that I saw out there that we could fix. Uh, for starters, coaching. Coaching has been better these last few weeks because they've let Jacob run the rock. If they hadn't, if they hadn't established the run game last night, it would have been a long, long night. And it wouldn't have been as close as it was. But you don't go for two with four minutes left in the game because you may not get the ball back. You tie the damn thing, and you take the sure points, and at least you could fight for overtime if nobody scores. You miss that two-point conversion, you're already behind. you got to get that ball back. One way or another, you got to get that ball back, whether they score or not. And if they scored again and went for two and made it, now you're down by nine. You have no shot. So, to me, I don't care what the analytics say. You don't do Ooh, that. You you're talking about if the Chiefs made it when they went for two? No, no. If, if once once the Chiefs missed the two point conversion, they were still up by one. But I'm mean, not one. They were up by uh, seven. Mm -hmm. But the Raiders decided to try to win the game and go up by one. And that's where they failed. They should have tied it because if Kansas City well, had got the ball back and went down and scored again, they would have put it away. True, but to their credit, to McDaniel's credit, he did see the 13 seconds last year. So yeah. regardless, I don't necessarily hold that against him. What I, If I was a coach of the Raiders, would I have kicked this point, tied it at 30? Yes. However, now, I will say this first. If he makes it, it's not even an issue. Good call. I think we're more not I'm necessarily more upset because it wasn't a good call. Not necessarily. Because if he makes it, there were still four minutes left. All yeah. that's gonna do is light a fire under the Chiefs offense to go down and kick field goal and win the game. True. But being ahead by one point. They didn't have – the play calling sucked on the Chiefs' last drive. Like, they were running the rock, running the rock, running the rock, and then for some reason Andy Reid had to do Andy Reid type of things and go for a, a really long pass to, to uh, McCole Hardman that Mahomes overthrew him by 20 yards. You know, so if we were behind, I think that would not have been in the Raiders' favor. The fact that we were ahead actually helped you guys out because you got the stop and you had another shot. Yeah. To win now, the game. 
Let's now, talk about that. The Chiefs shot. should have not gone for two. The Chiefs should the Chiefs should have kicked the extra point, been up by eight, and forced the Las Vegas Raiders to go for two. Not mm-hmm. make it a decision. It forced them to do it. Yeah. Because the worst case scenario, it is a tie if the Raiders do get it. And I'm not ready to talk about Chris Jones yet. Oh, no, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, I just um, want to make sure we're not there yet. Um, on that final drive, we did some more good things. But on fourth and one, Jacobs is, ran for 178 yards on the day. You get that yard through him. Okay, typical Raider fan inflating the numbers. He had 150 yards. I'm counting his rushing and receiving. <laughs> you said he ran for 170 yards. I'm sorry, yeah. Yards. I know that's only 20 yards, but don't don't destroy my okay. defense like that. <laughs> my, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I mean, you, you only let him have a career day, but, you know. True, he did have a career day. Kelsey had a career day. Okay, Kelsey um, stats. I want to talk about that real quick. Go ahead. Dude had what, what was it? Five catches. Seven. S- seven catches. Oh, right, he had seven yards. catches, twenty-five yards. If you Four just times. look at that part alone, it's like, man, they shut him down. But when you attack on those four touchdowns, it's like a head scratcher. How does that happen? He's almost I'm like, gonna... hey, holler at me when you get in the red zone. That's that's pretty much what it was because MVS uh led the led the team in receptions last night and mm-hmm. yards. The, and the cool thing about it was MVS, uh Schuster, and Kelsey all had eight targets. So he spreading was it around. Know, spreading around. Now he completed 49 passes, so you had to add that to the I mean, not completed. He attempted 49 passes. I know what you mean. So he tried it out to the running backs and things like that. But 24 of those 49 attempts, so half was going to his wideouts and tight end, split up pretty much evenly. I was pretty impressed with that stat. But yeah, he's very efficient. It all boiled down to the Raiders are going to Raider. I will tell you, by being a Chiefs fan for life, I can always count on the Raiders to do something completely stupid, especially when Derek Carr is the quarterback. No, no, we we can't knock Carr. He didn't have a bad game at all. I didn't say he had a bad game. It's not what I said. I said just they Raider with him at quarterback, especially since they had him. Before, uh, let's see, they Raidered. When I say Raiders are going to Raider, they make dumb mistakes. Uh, 90s, Marty Schottenheimer always took advantage of that. John yeah. Gruden's first tenor, tenure with Gannon and, and Tim Brown, he turned that around. Yeah, He actually reversed it where the Chiefs did some stupid stuff. Yeah, And they would win the games. But after he left, it kind of flew back to now. And then Andy Reid is, you know, pretty much taking it to division. another level. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, I can go back game versus game versus game where Carr – makes mistakes. Now, Carr pretty much played a pretty good game, I will say. I will give him credit. He uh, he played really good. Um, but what happened to the wide receivers running into each other at the last play? What's up with that? How's that, that was happen? Not, that wasn't a Carr thing. What that was was a No, no, I know it thing. wasn't a Carr thing. I said, well, was, how does that happen? Um, both of them are running their routes, and the ball was in the air because the Chiefs' defensive line, they got to Carr, forcing him to throw it a second or two earlier than he wanted to. He can still put it on the money, but the thing is, both receivers are looking back and they see the ball in the air, and they both run towards it because they believe that they got the ball. The thing is, if either one of those guys runs into a Chief before they run into each other, it's a pass interference call because they ran in each other. It looks like a dumb play. What were they doing? It wouldn't have been a pass interference call because the ball was overthrown, but by 20 yards. I mean, he launched that ball. They were both on the ground, probably about the 30 and the ball landed on the 20, 15, somewhere in that arena. But I want you to go back and look at that play again, because neither one of those receivers were looking back for the ball. 
Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry. Uh, Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro. Not, sorry, not the tight end for the Patriots. We don't. We don't sorry. do Patriots here. Hunter Renfro. It, it was his mistake. He he yeah. was the only yeah. one that could have seen the ball, but he was looking down, and I I to me that's just that's unforgivable. That that's unforgivable. It, I agree. That that that's, that's a lapse. That's a lapse that comes with lack of uh, lack of discipline. I understand why they did that on on the fourth down though, because I mean we we just we got burned twice by Adams on those plays like that. Um, but that's where me as a coach, I wouldn't have did it because it's like you did it to him twice. Andy Reid has very smart teams; they're not going to let you do it a third time. Well, if they wouldn't have ran into each other, that that pass would have been complete. Yeah, I mean, our defensive line didn't get to him. They blitzed Bolton, the linebacker, he and got and you him. can pretty much say it on every play. They make it genius. They don't. Here's where we are. You know. Yeah, I, it was just but a very ugly game. And and, and the the, it, the it, thing it, that the thing that you would call raidering, I'm gonna refer to was during that Chiefs field goal where they missed it before they uh you know, got the penalty. How do you hold if you're the defense on a field goal? Because well, we, you've seen the play, right? Well, yeah. He I mean, I know, I know that he did it. I'm, oh, okay. I, I, no, I'm not saying that he didn't. It's, it was clear as day. That is what I would call stupid. The, no, the receivers running each other, that's an accident. Is... But this was just plain stupid. Hey, I'm going to grab you and push you back no you, you play football in your in your life have you played yes i have football? okay have you ever ran into your own teammate no because i okay so that would that that's that's a raider raider and that's what i'm talking about you guys are professional pay millions of dollars you don't run into your own guy you both you know, know what routes you're going they were both doing scissor routes you don't complete the scissor at the same place you know no, what I mean? I know what you mean. So, yes, that was a bad call on, I mean, a, a, a dope head play um, on the holding on. the Because that would have gave – were you guys down by one? Still? Yeah, was we would have got 24, the ball back. 24-23? Yeah. Yeah, so that gave us – yeah, that gave us the extra chance, and then we came back and, and right, you know, made it 30-23. to 23, But – should have been 31 to 23, but we've already discussed that. That's true. Now, uh, what was this. the play? Uh, nope, that was a Chris Jones thing. I was thinking that made it go up because it should have been 14 to 7 halftime, 14 10 at halftime. It should have been at least, at least. Um, but before we get into the Chris Jones play, I, I, I want to talk about the referees. And how upset I yes. was at that game, uh, watching that game last night. I when think the referees, it's safe to say we were both upset at the refs last night. When the referees are taking center stage during a football game, um, there's a problem. I understand player safety. Yes. I, re I, I remember growing up, and the videos coming out of the league's biggest hits, you know, and you'd see all them monster hits. They would show it on ESPN, be a 30 minute section, you know, and, you know, they've just boom, NFL films. That's what they rewind it. Do the Joe Theismann one. Exactly. Yes. The before we get into the roughing the passer thing, the two defensive pass interference calls in the first half. Yes. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. If I was a quarterback in the NFL, I would run those plays, play after play after play, and just tell my receiver to jump up and let the defender touch you. It's automatically going to be a penalty. That needs to be looked at. Yeah. That needs to be straightened up. That first DPI. I could give it to you because the kid never turned around. 
the rookie. So yeah. So yeah. the so the rule is you have to have your head turned. Yeah. The one in the end zone that gave you guys the ball on the one yard line. Bull crap call. My man had his head turned around. The ball was underthrown by at least two yards. Adams jumped up and grabbed our guy in a hug. Penalty. Those things need to be fixed. Besides the white elephant in the room with the with the pass interference. I mean the the yeah, rest of the passer. Um, those there's those going things to be, have got to be fixed. There has to be some meetings this offseason to get this straightened out. And speaking they better of, do it before the offseason. Because well, if this costs a, a team a, a playoff victory, a Super Bowl win, something like that. Now, before Chris Jones, this started – this actually started on Sunday mm -hmm. down in Tampa. Same exact situation. The guy, I forget his name, from Atlanta came Brady and got Jerry. to Brady. Is that who it was? Okay. He, he wrapped Brady up, spinned him, took him down. It was not vicious at all. It was not – a heavy blow, but uh, they immediately threw the flag for uh, the penalty, and it was not roughing the passer. I've seen way more violent hits than that on QBs, and I'm talking about during this concussion era. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And the Raiders did the exact same thing to Mahomes in the second half, and there was no penalty. The uh, I think it was when the one, the play where – we was down near the two yard line, and Mahomes tripped over a guy, like tripped over the offensive line's feet, got up, and then your guys' linebacker uh, came in, swung around, threw him down the exact same way that Brady got thrown down. Yeah, no penalty, no penalty. I, I agree. I mean, you know, just because I'm on the other team doesn't mean that I wouldn't agree on this because it can easily happen in one of my games. You know, it will happen in one of your games. Yeah. Uh, it's going to it, affect every NFL team this year. Guarantee it. I agree with you. And it, you're right. Something has to be done. But, again, I do not believe that it will be until the end of the season because that's NFL protocol. So look for it to happen in a playoff game. And God forbid it happen in the Super Bowl. Here's a simple fix. Do you watch college football? Yes, I do. What do they do on penalties? They get together and they say, was it or was it not? Easy fix. Yeah. Do the same thing. And, and, and you know what? If I'm correct, and I might be wrong about this, New York has the right to call down at any time and say, hey, let's take another look at this. I don't know if, if if that's the case as any time. Maybe they have to be asked. I mean, I don't know. Well, I'd I know I know during up. the last two minutes they can do it any time. But I thought that they also reserved the right to do it prior to that to avoid a blown call. They should have a referee in New York watching on TV the same thing that we're watching. I believe they do at, at all times, but I don't know. I, I got to find out what the ruling is on when they. Uh, but is it one step. referee watching twelve games, or is it twelve referees watching one game each? Now we the NFL is a billion dollar industry. They better have more than one. <laughs> I don't know. They don't pay the referees games. all year. Uh, <laughs> the referees true. are part time, so. Um, but I digress. But, they need yeah. to make these rules from. I mean, I, I get it. Uh, the, the the instant replay is, is designed for objective, you know, is was the ball in bounds? Was the knee down? What did the did the ball get bobbled? That type of thing. Versus subjective calls, you know. They need to they need to sh strengthen that gap. Yeah. I mean, I hate to, I hate it, but they did get it right on the uh Devontae Adams catch. It it they wasn't did. clean. It wasn't clean. And I'll be the first to tell you that. <laughs> Now, I, I actually if they went the other way first, yeah, if they went the other way and kept it that way, I'd be like, hey, you know, I saw it a little different, but I'll take it. I mean, that's the way it right. is. As a fan, as a fan, you experience both sides, and oh yeah, the ones that are in I your mean, favor, you'll take it all day long. 
it's kind of like the referees were trying to overcorrect the bad call on Chris Jones in the second half. I mean, you guys sneezed and you got a flag for it, you know. Yeah. You know, rough, you know, they hurt, you know, you hurt Patrick Mahomes' feelings and flag 15 yards. You know, I get it. Just don't but make Patrick quick, Mahomes the next Tom Brady to where nothing can happen won't. and nobody can touch him. They won't. He's the wrong skin color, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, Chris Jones. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel. The only man that's ever had a roughing the passer penalty while he had the football in his own hand. I want to know how you can be called for pass interference when you are no longer the passer. Again, that's some Brady type stuff there. Remember, my team is the original team that was a victim of the tuck rule. If I knock the ball out of your hands, no, his arm was going forward. It's an incomplete pass. So as a Raider fan, I've seen it all. I've literally seen it all. After the two receivers ran at each other last night, I have seen it all. So I've learned not to let the highs get too high or the lows get too low because there's always something else. Referees should not be this involved in determining the outcome of a football game. No, nope. Period. I agree. So, so tell me something. We got some games coming up. And I want you to tell me about the AFC West games. I mean, you we can skip the uh, Las Vegas game because we know they're not going to lose. They're not going to win either. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic. The glass is half full. It's a bye week, folks. That's what we're laughing at. Um, I think the great thing about that is you have that that nasty taste in your mouth for two weeks. Well, that's why I wanted to get to these games that are coming up because there's a team that has a nasty taste in their taste taste for our English speaking audience, a nasty taste in their mouth from the last seven months. That would be a one Buffalo Bills team. It's gonna be a rough one. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. Y'all can't play with them like you did with uh, the Raiders. We won't. And and we and that might have been part of the problem. Y'all might have been looking ahead. Possibly, but I mean, I'm not I'm not, you know, I'm I may jokingly like, you know, whole last night when you guys were up 17 nothing, I'm shooting you all these wide-eyed yeah. emojis, you know. I'm messaging. I was never once worried that we weren't going to make this a football game. That's why I, I mean, didn't call for the bait. That's why I didn't right, call for the bait. I'm I'm not going to send something back like, "Yeah, we can really smoke y'all." No, we not. I mean, a, that's a 30 point Kansas lead City. is not enough against the Chiefs. Kansas City, that's what they do. They 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 tend to come back and and they tend you know, to play better from behind. They do because they have to. Ask the 49ers um, about that from the Super Bowl. You know, I my heart wants to pick the Chiefs to win. My brain says the Bills are going to beat us. And you know, I did pick this as a loss on our schedule. Um, but I picked the Colts, you know, to yeah. lose to us. Not so. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Chiefs to win because I need to. I need to write in my win loss record. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm I'm gonna pick the Buffalo Bills to win. But you know, am I gonna be upset if they lose? No, because you know, I could see I could see it coming down to that. All right, I'm going with Buffalo because it's a revenge game. But I'm thinking that this, this is going to be one of those games where Buffalo might win it, but guess who you're going to end up having to see in the playoffs again? And that's when Kansas City gets even. So Regardless, be, be careful what you wish for. Again. Regardless, we're going to see each other again. Uh, Just depends is it going to be. In Buffalo or in Kansas City? Both teams are good for the cold weather, so, you know, it wouldn't matter. That That's one that it wouldn't matter. Um, but, yeah, this, that leaves us with two other AFC West teams, Denver and um, Los Angeles, who happen to play Monday night. So you get two AFC West rivalries on Monday nights back-to-back. -back. I'm going with the Chargers on this because – History has shown me this year that the Broncos ain't shit. The only thing Russ is cooking is some Hot Pockets. <laughs> he ain't even doing that right. <laughs> He's warming them up in the freezer. 
Um, yeah, I'm Chargers, but I really don't care who wins or loses game. They're both hot garbage. I, I agree. I agree. <sighs> Man. One more game. One more game. Yes, sir. Because it's the it's the other rubber to the road match this week. Cowboys at Eagles. Eagles. No, you're not even considering the Cowboys to win. Like it, it's a trap door game for real because the Cowboys have shown some great defense, but I think they're going to have some trouble when they play a team with great defense. I think the Eagles are going to win too, but it'll be a close game. Yeah. All right, we're getting ready to get out of here. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe because we'll have some more crazy stuff coming real soon. We always do because we're slightly warped. That's Ryan. I'm Rick. Y'all take care. Slight, slightly pissed this afternoon. I was slightly pissed all night, brother. <laughs> <laughs> See ya.